Hello, everyone. Welcome to Snap Take. This is Glazer of Snap Judgments, the official podcast of Marvel Snap Zone. We've got three incredible decks for you. We've got two Italian tournament decks that are top meta players that beat Thanos, and we've got the meta farmer at the end of the video, a deck that absolutely destroys Thanos. All that plus your last chance review for Mockingbird. We're going to get started by telling you about the Infinite Series. This is an Italian eight player tournament. It's what the Italians consider their eight best players. They're playing a round robin tournament. Participating are Dot Geo, Pokebonzi, Demian, Urban, Comis, Desert Fox, Googly, and Lupo Chesnapa and Mariello. I know all of them except Mariello, but cool. Um, these are players that all finish near the top of Infinite Ladder every single season. They win tournaments. These are some of the best players in the world. And it's taking place every weekend, this round robin. So we're going to get you every week exclusive decks from this tournament, from the best players, what they've been testing, what they've been playing. We're not going to show you things that are just known stuff. Um, most of the tournament this week was Thanos decks, along with two players playing Phoenix Force that won and beat Thanos. But it's the um, standard Nimrod version that we featured on the channel at least three or four times. So you know the deck. We're going to eventually just do a Thanos Day for all, uh, sorry, a Thanos Day, a Phoenix Day for all the updated Phoenix Force lists. Have no fear. But you know Phoenix Force lists. They run um, some cheap move cards, then some cheap destroy cards. Phoenix Force, Shuri, Nimrod. Cool. Then sometimes they run Taskmaster. Sometimes they run um, Arnim Zola, et cetera, et cetera. They're all the same basic concept. If anything new comes, I'll be sure to let you know. But we've got two different decks. We've got decks that were both that both beat Thanos. These are Thanos killing decks, and I'll explain to you how and why we know that, beyond that they literally both beat Thanos in the tournament so far. These are wider scale Thanos beating decks, as is the last one. The first is from Lupo Chesnappa, who is currently the number 12 ranked player in Marvel Snap, and Comey's is the number 13 ranked player right now, so you know, not as good as Lupo Che, except Comey's is also literally the world champion of Marvel Snap right now. So we've got two distinct decks from each of these players. Sub, you will get their decks exclusively here. Thank you to my Italian friends for providing the list. All right, so Lupo Chesnappa's discard tier zero. You know this list, or you should know this list. This list was going around a lot, um, I believe, like the first person who had it was actually Den, our friend Den, over at Marvel Snap Zone. But it basically disappeared from the meta with the Lockjaw nerf, and it shouldn't have. This is still one of the best decks and one of the most powerful things to do, especially in Conquest, where you can basically ignore your bad draws and maximize your good ones. You can do that on ladder too, but it's sort of a feels bad when you have to retreat that much on ladder. Whereas in conquest, you win so quickly when you do go off that the opponent can feel helpless, like there's nothing they can do. All right, so you need Corvus Glaive, and Pro but Proxima can be either Black Cat or Wolverine. I personally prefer Black Cat in that spot. Um, otherwise, this is a full... Oh, sorry, you need Modoc. sorry. Um, Modoc should have been a series three cards so long ago that it always escapes my mind. The really old season pass cards that have been out forever are the ones that still get me. But either way, Modoc is utterly irreplaceable in this deck, as is Corvus Glaive. Proxima Midnight is replaceable largely with Black Cat. Good. Good. All right. So please go back to this list. Um, I know it's not in the meta right now. You There are cubes waiting for you if you play it. Turn one, pass. Turn two, Mobius over Colleen. Um, you'd rather have Colleen swarm the Mobius, but uh, sorry, Morbius, but sometimes you have Morbius. Turn three, you really want Corvus. You will also still Colleen swarm. Colleen swarm is a bigger priority than Corvus if you have Lockjaw in hand. Turn four, if you ramped and you still and you have Modoc and no Hella, just throw down a Modoc. You'll be perfectly fine. Um, you can also drop a Lockjaw into a Modoc, but then you're giving yourself an extra turn to draw Hella, which can be frustrating. If you have swarms, locked with a swarm is absolutely stellar, or you can just drop Dracula and be safe. Turn five, you've got Hell or Modoc, just like turn four. You can also throw that second swarm into Lockjaw if you're there. Um, that's generally the play line. You can also just like drop a Magneto just fine if you played Corpus. Turn six, Hell or Modoc and swarms for Apocalypse Dracula. And Apocalypse Dracula with an empty Hella hand is the dream. This is such a strong deck. You really, really need to play it. It's got a thousand play lines. It will take a little bit longer than most Hella lists to learn because Lockjaw being four is awkward for it, but it is extraordinarily strong and extraordinarily consistent. Please hit that sub button. We bring you three exclusive decks every single weekday. We do seven days a week of videos here on the channel. We've got a two-hour podcast with some of Marvel Snap's biggest and best personalities. This coming week, we're going to learn deck building from Ika and 
Yo, Woody MJ. Last week we did custom cards and a look at data mines with Drew Barry and Pershawn. We cover everything here. Hit that sub. Watch for as long as you can. It really helps us grow. We're trying to get to 10,000. We're at like 9,560 last I saw, something along those general lines. Help us get those last 500 subs. Help, like, comment, share the video, whatever you can. We really appreciate it. All right, a pile of bones asked the most underrated and overrated card. So I think the most underrated card is Supergiant. Whenever I see a Supergiant deck and I play it, it wins. Um, I think Supergiant is especially strong in one particular discard list that Parry Manilow has been running. You can check out... Ooh, hello, cat. You can check out Parry over on um, Twitch at Parry Manilow at your leisure. He's basically... He plays the deck all the time. It's a um, dock and discard list that runs Modoc. It's absolutely stellar. Um, Parry will also be on the podcast relatively soon. The most overrated card... It runs Supergiant, obviously, that's why I'm bringing that up. Um, the most overrated card is Shang-Chi. I keep hearing Shang-Chi needs to be nerfed. I think that that is a silly idea. Shang-Chi not only keeps the meta in shape, but good players play around Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi is a huge, massive threat if you're not playing right. You should always have Shang-Chi in the back of your mind. You should know what decks do and don't run Shang-Chi, and you should play for and against priority when you know your opponent does have Shang-Chi. That is what adds strategy to Marvel Snap instead of just slam down big point. So I think Shang-Chi is extremely overrated, um, not in terms of impact on the meta, but in terms of goodness in top decks. Um, Jim Sharpneck wants to know how often I switch decks, and the honest answer is about every five or six games. I very rarely play more than five or six games with a single deck. I've got a lot of things I have to test for this channel, and I have all the cards, so I try and play as much as possible. You should not follow my lead unless you are a very experienced card gamer. I have a good set of fundamentals for Marble Snap, but even then, the last deck today, the last deck today climbed from rank 200 to top 5 just by farming Thanos. I would need practice with that. I would need 50 games before I felt really comfortable with that. The discard list we just looked at? I can handle that and like now I don't have to actually test to play that. So it depends what I'm testing. Um, the next two decks are much more masters decks than the previous. And uh, Summer Jams wants a meta Dark Horse that can beat up on Thanos, which is funny you ask because that first deck usually beats Thanos, but these next decks, two decks, are built to straight up farm Thanos. They're hard to play, which is why you're not going to see them everywhere. But if you can master them, you beat the crap out of Thanos. If you'd like your questions read out in tomorrow's video, please leave one in the comments of this video. We're running a little short on questions, so if you have any, please drop them. All right, Comey's Bounce and Move. This is very, very, very similar to the uh, the Ragged Bounce deck, Bounce Move deck that was top four in Worlds that uh, Comey's beat. Actually, I'm 90% sure. Yeah, Comey's beat it. So this basically takes that deck and adds a little bit of tech. It says... Um, 2099 is nice, right? But Shang-Chi is just a better card, which is 2099's problem fairly consistently. Um, Mobius handles a lot of the Thanos nonsense, a lot of the Loki nonsense, otherwise Loki can just go so big. And Elioth says, um, well, it's fundamentally impossible to play around both Heimdall and Elioth in this deck. So playing this deck is going to take a lot of freaking practice. Move is the highest skill cap thing in the game of Marvel Snap. I am completely convinced because you need to be planning for your space from like turn one. Um, generally speaking, you'd like to keep as much power mid and right as possible so you can threaten Heimdall whether you use it or not. If you get enough power, though, don't Heimdall play Elioth. Your standard operating procedure here is get enough power by turn 5, try and have like one really, really strong lane, and one lane you're up a little bit on turn 5, and then if that really strong lane is not Shangable, Elioth the other one. You'll usually win that way because your opponent has to play around both Heimdall and Elioth, and literally it's just not possible to usually do both. Right, Elioth is spicy, you can make it Magneto, it's not as good. Ghost Spider is 100% needed, Mobius can be rogue, and Comey's is ranked 13 right now and won the Snapfan World Championships and was like top 5 last season. Alright, so again, this beats Thanos, this beat Thanos all day in the Snapfan World Championships, which I'm assuming is why it ended up in Comey's hand for this Thanos-filled mini-tournament. So turn one pass, generally speaking, you'll occasionally drop Iron Fist if you know you have something to play next turn onto it, but usually pass. Turn two is move guards, that could be dagger, or you could start to um, get that Iron Fist set up now. Turn three is move card, and that could be, again, if you played a dagger and they've been playing cards, that could be cloak. Um, that could easily be, whatchamacallit, that can be... Um, Human Torch and Ghost Spider, whatever. So, like, there's so many combinations of those move cards. Remember, you're trying to get them to land mid and right. Turn four, one last move and bounce if you can. Generally speaking, I prefer Ghost Spider and Beast here, but Ghost Spider and um, 
Falcon work just fine. Some to, um, you don't really want Cloak here, but you can again. Turn five, replay all the cheap move cards and drop a tech card. Whatever tech card you think is going to win. If they're a Sarah list, that tech card is Mobius. If they've dropped something big, that tech card is Shang-Chi. If there's an ongoing through to seal, that tech card is um, Rogue. You have an answer for all three. So pick whichever one makes most sense. Actually, is Rogue in this test? Am I losing my head? Not Rogue, sorry. It's Shang or uh, Mobius. I don't know where the hell Rogue came from. I'm thinking of the last deck. Excuse me. Um, Rogue is your replacement for Mobius. That's where my head went. So it's cheap move and a tech card or just a bunch of cheap move. Cloak is really good. Making every game into New York, if you can play Cloak in an empty location, is really strong. Cloak also means you don't usually have to Heimdall because you can basically guarantee a lane win with Cloak. Um, turn six is a Lyoth or Heimdall. Figure out which one your opponent seems like they're playing around based on their board position and do the other thing. This is very hard to play, but an absolutely stellar deck. Try and keep uh, Dagger around 9 power where possible. You can get it above that on the last turn. Vulture with 1 move is 9 power, and Torch with 2 moves is 8 power. So that's about where you want to leave them to threaten Heimdall. But if you get all three of those around a lane, you don't really need to Heimdall, right? Because they're so big that like you're winning that lane, and then Eliath wins you the other. All right, last chance review for Mockingbird time. Mockingbird is a meta card. This is one of the best cards in Marvel Snap. Um, I think Mockingbird is a better card than Cull Obsidian, which was last month's best card. I think Mockingbird is a better card than anything released in January by like a fair margin, which means I think Mockingbird is the best card they've released in Marvel Snap since Blob. Cool. Before Blob, um, it's not as good as Nerf Blob even now, but it's still an absolutely stellar card. One of the best cards goes in like a thousand shells. I think this is a, basically a must-have card, which is obnoxious because it was mo removed from the Ms. Marvel Spotlight Cash, obviously on purpose from Second Dinner as they try and make both valuable to make you spend money, right? Is this more valuable than Ms. Marvel? Right now, yes, but there may be a nerf for this, while Ms. Marvel is probably not getting nerfed again, so I'm not 100% sure. Right now, I would suggest you get this. Um, is this better than Ms. Marvel and Cannonball? No, probably not. Um, do you need Ghost Spider or whatever the man thing? Then I still think it's probably better, unless you want to learn move, in which case Ghost Spider obviously goes up in value. It's really, really close, but I think this is a grab 100% if you have Ms. Marvel and the uh, resources to do so. And if you don't have Ms. Marvel, I lean very, very slightly Ms. Marvel and Cannonball, but it's really close, and I don't think this is a wrong answer. This is one of the 10 best cards in Marvel Snap right now, without any question in the world. All right, our last deck is Miley. I missed an E in the typing of the name, really sorry. Miley rank 200. Miley started at rank 200 and is currently the rank 5 player on the Infinite Leaderboard. You can just Google Marvel Snap Infinite Leaderboard and see where all these players are. Miley is, as of recording, number 5. I'd imagine he's a little higher or lower by the time we're talking about this. This is um, an old school junk deck, kinda. Uh, but, like, it's got the Annihilus stuff, it's got the Alive stuff, it's got a lot of ways to really be obnoxious. This also wins a lot because your opponent will be playing around Galactus and there ain't no Galactus in this deck. So it can clog your opponent up and then it can remove an absolute ridiculous amount of big power with Valkyrie and Shang-Chi and not leave any room for your opponent to play with Professor X and the Junk. Okay, so you can find Miley on twitter.com slash Miley3es with a C at the end. So Annie is needed and so is Alive. That should be Alive, not Annie. Annie isn't needed twice, although... It's very needed. Jeff can be Hobgoblin. These are my least changes. I think you need Ravona, but my Lee says you can try Rogue. I wouldn't play this deck without Ravona, and I'm just going to take a quick look at why for you. Um, a two-class Green Goblin with Titania is game-winning. A turn four Professor X is game-winning. Yes, that's only like two real plays, but those plays are how you win. Also, turn five Professor X with Titania is absolutely backbreaking. Having all those options um, that Ravona gives you is why she's here. All right, this is a master's deck. This is very hard to play, but it is absolutely stellar. You need to learn your different matchups, but almost no matter what you do, you are going to farm the face off Thanos with this list. So turn one, Hood is the play. Turn two, Ravon is better than Jeff. Turn three, what I'd like to do is find a lane that they have two things that they're probably not going to play it again and go with both Titania and Green Goblin. Um, if you play Titania first and Green Goblin, you have now clogged that lane. At that point, I would generally play Magic elsewhere. Um, or you can Professor X 
right if you plant a sentry. If you've got, um, if you do that neither the left or the mid, if you can think they're not going to play right, if you can manage to force them left for whatever reason, a good location, or you have that Ravona there, um, Professor X right is good. If not, just drop a sentry, or you can drop like, um, you can drop magic at that point. Turn five, by the way, magic with demon. They're very good. Turn five, Professor X, um, generally speaking, again, right, unless you played um, that uh, void right, at which point you're going to Professor X on the sentry. Or you can drop a Nihilus if you don't think they're not going to make that lane fill and just give them that sentry if they're not playing a Nihilus and they're not getting the lane fill. Um, you can drop Valkyrie at this point. I almost never drop Valkyrie on turn five. Tr Valkyrie is a turn six or turn seven play, unless there is some blindingly obvious target. Although I'd rather, generally speaking, Shang-Chi that and then get to play my demon too. Turn six, Eliath, if turn six is the last turn of the game. Or you can drop a Nihilus with that demon. Or Valkyrie or Sentry plus like a Jeff. And turn six, uh, turn seven is either Eliath or Valkyrie. And then you win the game of Marvel Snap because you have three of the best finishers in the game with Eliath, Valkyrie, and Shang-Chi, along with taking up their space so you know exactly where to play them for max effect. Quick reminder, by the way, if you need to win a Valkyrie lane, um, there aren't a thousand ways to do so in this deck, right? So Valkyrie with a Titania after, if you don't have priority, or Valky Valkyrie with a Demon after are your main ways to win that lane. This is a very, very strong deck with a lot of play lines and a lot of things to do and you need to plan out what you think you're aiming for early on if you can do that well again this is rank five and beats the crap out of the best deck the one everyone is playing in marvel snap currently all right certain tiers of support on our patreon come with on air thanks we've got abigail gisla mandatory burnout cables david g wingfield direwolf lab father newman good dog gamer inc jane everett jd mcdonald dean ho akila platino kirtix Lee, Koire, KCH, Doku, Philip Ratkovich, Haplo, Kenny Loggins, Rob Silverman, The Bizza, J. Bussy, X Force V, Skippy G, Tommy Nyquist, Black Dahlia, The Great Kazoo, Jessica Gamble, Bottles, Louis Antunes, Mitch, Mikey Hijinks, No Flex, Ocularis, Pretty Chill, Seamus, Spike Jones, Two Ties, Tucker, The Pirate King, The Homie Min, and of course, Gunny T. Thanks so much for watching. We'll be back tomorrow with a another great deck. I'm not going to leave you out with a full deck guide, but we're also going to take a look at Cannonball, and I promise I think I like Cannonball more than you do. If you are interested in supporting us more, check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash snapjudgments. But hey, if you made it this far in the video, we do one of these every day. Thank you so much. Please hit that sub button and help us spread the word. See you tomorrow. Ah, ow! Fuck! <laughs>